Come again. Hello, and welcome to the American Massage Conference pre-conference broadcast series on Massage Therapy Radio. I'm Felicia Brown, and I'll be your host for this interview and series. This is one of several broadcasts with the presenters and experts who are appearing at the American Massage Conference, which is being held in May of 2011, that's the 20th through 22nd, in beautiful Atlanta, Georgia. Our special guest today is James Waslowski. Today, James and I will be talking about his topics for the American Massage Conference. He's actually teaching two classes, one, orthopedic massage for complicated shoulder and knee conditions and pelvic stability, and the other on complicated forearm, elbow, wrist, and hand conditions, also to be solved with orthopedic massage. But first, let me tell you a little bit about James. James Waslowski is an author and international lecturer on chronic pain and sports injuries, teaching approximately 40 seminars per year around the globe. He's developed seven orthopedic massage and sports injury DVDs and authored manuals on advanced orthopedic massage, clinical sports massage, and client self-care. James is currently publishing a book on clinical massage therapy, a structured approach in pain management with Pearson Publishing. James presents at state, national, and international massage, chiropractic, and osteopathic conventions. This includes keynote speeches at the Florida State Convention, the New England Regional Conference, World of Wellness, World Massage Festival, and the Australian National Massage Conventions. His audience includes massage and physical therapists, as well as athletic trainers, chiropractors, osteopaths, nurses, physicians, occupational therapists, physiotherapists, and high-end sports and athletic trainers. James received the SFMTA International Achievement Award and was inducted into the Massage Therapy Hall of Fame in 2008. James, welcome to the American Massage Conference pre-conference broadcast series. It's wonderful to have the opportunity to talk with you today and to talk more about your classes on orthopedic massage. Thanks, Felicia. I'm really excited to be here and part of the American Massage Conference and the pre-conference broadcast series. Well, we are really glad to have have you here and to learn about orthopedic massage and uh, and everything you have to share. I, I can tell you, there's I know I'm going to have a lot of questions along the way, uh, so I can't wait to get into it. But before we get into your classes and topics, I'd like to ask you, why exactly did you want to become involved with the American Massage Conference in Atlanta? Felicia, I've been able to work with pretty much the major conferences worldwide from here to Australia. And um, after watch, after being at the Canadian Massage Conference and working with Scott and his group, I, I think it's this actually, when you look at the sponsorship and the people involved, I, I think it tends, has the potential to be one of the biggest conferences in the world and one of the most prestigious lineups of speakers. So when I get an opportunity like that to teach with uh, colleagues of mine that are uh, pioneers and cutting edge in the industry, um, it's a blessing, and I just think it's going to be a great time. I couldn't agree with you more. I feel exactly the same way, and I'm really looking forward to being there uh, myself as a presenter and, and looking forward to working with the same colleagues you are, especially working with you again. Thank you. <laughs> so besides the classes that you're teaching, are there any other events or classes that you're excited about seeing or being a part of at the American Massage Conference? Well, there's always awesome network networking opportunities at all of these major conventions. Uh, as an entrepreneur and a business owner, I, I think it's a great thing to network with uh, the people, the vendors, the uh, the sponsors. The uh, I'm involved with everybody from Massage Today to Massage Warehouse to um, you know Scott and his group. So I think there's so much more to offer than what you see in the classroom environment. And with all of the who's who line up, I think it's just going to be a great time to network, have a have a socially good time with, with peers and friends, and uh, kind of get involved with aligning with some of the other great teachers. I couldn't agree with you more. And, in fact, in a recent broadcast uh, with Mandy Lane of Top Massage Tables, we really talked a lot about that networking and the opportunity to just uh, grow your professional uh, uh, contacts uh, at these shows and how that's really a, a very valuable part. As much as I think classes like yours are, are invaluable, that personal component and getting to know the people that are there I think is really important as well. Yeah, I agree. 
So um, moving on to the classes that you're teaching, um, you're actually teaching two classes at this year's conference, and they're both about orthopedic massage. Can you tell our listeners what exactly is orthopedic massage and how does it compare to modalities such as medical massage or clinical massage or, or sports massage? Um, Felicia, it's interesting you asked that question because really orthopedic massage was an evolution from clinical sports massage. Um, I, I want to honor the word medical massage by saying this is a subdiscipline, as are things like um, visceral and lymphatic and cranial and posturology and neuromuscular and myoskeletal, and I can, the list goes on. Um, so as part of the medical massage group, what we do I think orthopedic massage is a total system. There's a lot of assessment and special testing and clinical reasoning to decide what's the cause of each pain scenario. Uh, we take a great degree of honor in saying we blend many disciplines. Um, years ago, you would specialize in things just like myofascial or neuromuscular or one modality, and that is really not what's happening today. People are mixing you know, what do we do to treat myofascial pain different from neuromuscular pain, different from muscle strain pain, different from joint capsule adhesions, and how do we blend disciplines to solve what our clinical reasoning skills um, teach us is going on. And then one of the most important things, I think, in our clinical massage package is that we take a really close look at what I would call short and long muscles. An example, when we get into the shoulder, we would make sure that the therapist would lengthen things like the pecs and the subscap to relax the back of the shoulder like the rhomboids, middle traps. And by bringing all muscle groups and uh, potentially aligning all the bones throughout the body, we eliminate the majority of musculoskeletal pain patterns. So it's a form of uh, structural integration or structural balance. It's a very broad-based uh, series of assessment to define a most effective treatment plan and then teach the client how to become responsible in sustaining uh, the balance of the muscle groups throughout their body. So whether you want to call it clinical massage, medical massage, clinical sports massage, I think those are all buzzwords that are used universally uh, about the same thing, same way. So this isn't like trying to take the place of any of those other techniques, but really you're blending these into maybe your own formula or your own uh, take on things to, to create the best result possible for each client situation? Yeah, I think the, the beauty of orthopedic massage is whether you're working in a spa, as you're very familiar with Felicia, or you're working in a hospital or you're working with a professional sports team, these protocols can be easily implemented to any body area where the client has complained of a minor musculoskeletal pain condition or a major thing like thoracic outlet and frozen shoulder so I think it's a blend. Uh, when I started the profession, I trained in sports massage, then myofascial, and then I had the blessings to study with people like Tom Meyer's work on, at Anatomy Train, Eric Dalton's work in Moscow Alignment, uh, Paul St. John's Posturology. But I, what I like to say is this is a user-friendly, easy blend of advanced disciplines made simple, is what I might say, so that even if you're working in a spa environment and you don't have really good musculoskeletal knowledge, I'll show you how to reposition fascia or muscle groups to turn off the majority of the myofascial and neuromuscular pain patterns, and I'll make it easy to understand. So, so you're saying that I don't have to be in an orthopedic clinic or a medical setting to bring this type of thing in, and that I could actually integrate these techniques into a, a more relaxation-oriented massage, like might often happen into a, a, a spa setting, but that if the client comes in complaining about, hey, my shoulder's really killing me and I want to relax, that you can add a few of these techniques that you're going to show right into that spa massage. Absolutely, Felicia. We've had people like C.G. Funk from Massage Envy want, want you know, to see these things being user-friendly applications within a spa setting because, as you know, I've taught in places like Canyon Ranch and Four Seasons in Maui, and all of these major hotel chains want, they know that, the majority of their clients are going to walk into the spa for relaxation massage, but they're also going to have either tendon pain of the elbow or a little low back pain or some sciatica. And my goal is to, to see, as I'm seeing already, the spa trend changing where someone can go for a spa massage and get a treatment either in place of or along with their relaxation massage. Well, that you know, that sounds great. Even though I don't own a spa anymore, that's my typical client. You know, I'm still a practicing massage therapist, and 
Uh, most of my clients come in for that exact reason. They want to relax, but, oh, by the way, <laughs> yeah, I can't exactly. turn my head today or some, right. some kind of thing like that comes up. So that's, that's great. Uh, you know, I will be honest, even though I've been at some conferences with you, I thought, oh, well, what he teaches is probably not what I need to learn because, you know, that's not the kind of work I do. So that's good. I mean, that's great for me as a therapist, knowing that I could integrate just a few things here and there into my work um, and, and make a big difference with my clients. You know, the unfortunate mindset, Felicia, is that it might be too complicated for the new massage therapist to learn, but it, but it really isn't because I, I brilliantly blend learning styles to cater to even the most difficult learner. And I, I can teach a chiropractor and I can talk at their level or I can go to the basic massage curriculums and give a four-hour presentation and teach the new students. So I try to blend it so that I'm talking to the entire audience. I'm not there to impress them with the knowledge. I'm there to simplify these uh, simple muscle balancing techniques. So it sounds like this type of work is actually, and this type of class, is really well suited for any level of therapist. It doesn't just have to be a senior therapist that's been in practice for a long time, but even someone who's just gotten out of school um, or is looking to augment what they're already doing or, or, or just learn a few new trip tips, <laughs> tips and tricks yeah. to, uh, to simplify how they're relieving pain. You know, a simple thing I would say to the spa therapist is, is if start your patient face up if they're having back pain because if you look at the the anatomy trains of Tom Myers as he lifts the fascia from the top of the foot to the knee, from the knee into the hip and from the abdomen up into the sternum and then into the neck and the SDMs, oftentimes that gets the patient out of flexion, which is the majority of the pain patterns we see on the planet. So, so if I just taught you to move fascia from the top of the foot up to the head before working on those tight what would have been tight rhomboids, it would change everything that you do when you put them face down. So there's a simple transition. I, I, I like to break old school paradigms of why we would start somebody face up if they're having pain. So, so it is real simple. And, and, and then when I go to the chiropractor, we'll talk about everything from bony fixations of atlas axis to, so it can be very complicated, but, but like I said, I try to make the complicated pieces simple. Like if you have a frozen shoulder, you use the humerus to massage inside of the ball and socket joint to free up the inner fascia of the joint capsule. And I, and I also think that what makes it user-friendly is on one screen, I have human dissections. As we look inside of the human body with dissections and, and the primal picture, three-dimensional anatomy, and then the other screen, they're seeing what my hands are doing. So it's easy to see at any level of training that we're simply lengthening short muscles, relaxing long muscles, and treating joint pain that's caused from muscle imbalance. I see, I see. So it sounds like part of your training then is is more than just people watching you do the technique. Um, it's also you're showing some video or something. So tell me a little bit more about the multimedia um, presentation that you use versus you know the hands-on training that you're doing in your classes. I think that's one of my unique trademarks that I've seen great teachers like Eric Dalton start to do. And uh, what we do, Felicia, is um, I've, I've gotten a lot of feedback from people that have learning difficulties, people that are dyslexic and so on. And they'll say some educators don't cater to the visual, auditory, and kinesthetic learning styles. I'm personally a very kinesthetic learner. You could talk to me forever, but unless you touch my neck, I feel you press on that, that bone or that muscle and then I feed it back to you. I don't. I don't retain any of the learning. So when I teach, 70% of what I do is even in the three-hour class. 70% of that will be hands-on, where you will see a little bit of uh, anatomy physiology review. We'll do some testing. Uh, that'll take about 30 minutes. We will then um, work on each other, and we'll switch so everybody gets a chance to do the assessment and the massage, and then experience the feeling of the work. Uh, and by combining that visual, kinesthetic, auditory learning. Style. I've always had people say, I've had trouble learning all my life, and you've made it so simple between projecting everything up on the screens, multiple teaching assistants going around the rooms, helping with hand placement, palpatory landmarks, body mechanics. Um, I've been very blessed to be a teacher since I was 18, and so quite some uh, years of learning how to teach to the student rather than to try to impress the student, if you might say. Mm hmm I definitely understand. I've been in classes where uh, there wasn't that great level of understanding about what it means to teach yeah. <laughs> or how, how, to, how to speak to the student. Uh, like you, I've been teaching since I was about 17 or 18, although 
I started with figure skating, not quite the same thing, but it does it does uh, make it, I think, much more three dimensional to have uh, different media to share the information. And I'm I'm with you. The hands on experience is really important, which of course is part of why coming to a conference is so important compared to learning about something just in a video or a DVD. Absolutely, I agree with that. So now, James, I'm curious, um, you're teaching two different classes, and obviously they're going to be uh, filled with different content. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going to be in each of those? You have a three-hour class that's going to focus on elbow, hand, uh, forearm, and wrist conditions, and then the other is going to focus more on knee, shoulder, and pelvic stability. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Yeah, Felicia, I'm actually excited because we just came off the cruise uh, ship seminar where I was teaching with Ruth Warner, and we covered a topic called multiple crush phenomenon. Um, lo and behold, we had a patient that came in with surgery for his carpal tunnel, and then they realized it wasn't the tunnel, so then they moved up to the elbow and cut the area of the pronator teres and realized it wasn't the elbow, so then they told him they needed to treat his neck and shoulder. And I'm realizing, Felicia, that a majority of people don't understand uh, that when nerves get compressed in the neck and then they get compressed a second time in the shoulder, say the scalenes in the first rib, and then they come down and get compressed in the pronator teres or the bicipital aponeurosis of the elbow, by the time they are crushed three times, they don't stand a chance and they will test positive for classic um, carpal tunnel syndrome. So we're looking at farm wrist and hand conditions on how to balance out the muscles, soften the retinaculum, treat tendinosis of the elbow and tenosynovitis of the of the hand, and look at joint arthritis of the hand. But then we're taking a much greater detail at how much nerve uh, compression is happening in your neck and shoulder, but it's manifesting as a form wrist and hand condition. Um, so that's the three-hour course. The eight-hour course is what I'm most passionate about. Um, in writing my book with Pearson Publishing that will be released this year, uh, six years it's taken me to write this. I have really taken a close look at, at things like adhesive, adhesive capsulitis of the hip and shoulder. It's one of my trademarks, um, releasing people's shoulders when they've had a frozen shoulder for 20, 30 years, wow. um, releasing people's frozen hips when they haven't been able to move their hip and are scheduled for hip replacement. Um, and we've got some scientific research and clinical studies that will validate what's happening to the inner fascia of the ball and socket joint of the hip and shoulder, how if you release the, the capsule and the inner fascial adhesions, how you can better balance out the muscles, you know, and, and I think looking at things like low back pain, SI joint pain, sciatica, we're going to transition that into knee pain where we're looking at um, medial collateral ligament problems, lateral collateral ligament problems, patellar tracking, patellar tendinosis, IT band friction syndrome. Uh, the terms may seem complicated, but what I do, Felicia, is with one large screen, I'm saying, okay, these muscles connect to this big IT band, the pain's in the outside of the knee, but the muscle tension problem's coming from the hip. Please treat the cause, not the symptom. You know, we'll look at, uh, a lot of people don't understand the, the physiology behind treating a frozen shoulder and a frozen hip, and it was only six months ago, thank God the book isn't going to be released for another few months, that we had to go back and change everything in the textbook because now we're seeing as Whitney Lowe very well laid it out, early onset adhesive capsulitis of the shoulder, you, you lose lateral rotation. At that point, it's an inner fascial problem, but most medical textbooks think it's an adhesive capsular problem. And we can simply take the head of the femur and massage the inner ilium or the head of the humerus and massage the inner scapula to release that inner fascial problem. And I think when I share the scientific studies behind these techniques, um, it will really um, prevent people from stirring up those complicated conditions. In fact, one study says that if they don't release the inner fascia of the hip and shoulder and they try to stretch the surrounding muscles, which many therapists do, that it actually creates the secondary fibrosis in the surrounding capsule. Wow. And so when I show them the scientific evidence and research that I think through the grace of God surfaced right before this textbook came out, I think it's going <laughs> to revolutionize the way we think about these complicated uh, pain conditions. And, and what I learned, Felicia, in writing the book is um, when you hire a graphic, graphic artist or graphic medical illustrator, is a medical doctor first who does graphic illustrations. Many of the graphic illustrations that you see in major textbooks that are in medical schools are falsified thoughts around what's happening in that inner joint. We have the real picture of the fascia and the fibroblasts and the 
and the collagen. We have that, and the graphic artist has recorrected what we used to think was going on from a scientific level. So it will really be, you know, this is one of the first conferences going to actually share this cutting edge work that uh, I've believed in releasing frozen shoulders and had success for 15 years, but um, I've been criticized. And when you swim upstream and create change, you, you, you have to accept that from your peers. But now that we have the scientific evidence to support what used to be my vision or my hypothesis, um, I think it's going to change the way every manual therapist on on the planet works with complicated hip and shoulder problems. Well, it sounds like it. I, you've already got me chomping at the bit. Now I'm like, well, I have to learn about this. <laughs> you know, what have I been doing wrong for all these years I've been in practice, or how can I how can I make sure that I'm not creating more of a problem than you know a solution? So you know, and I, I don't know how far back you go back, Felicia, but Many years ago, we were taught to do deep cross-fiber friction for people with tendon tendonitis or tendon pain. Right. And now we're saying, um, first of all, cross-fiber friction doesn't realign scar tissue like we thought. It's the movement and the eccentric forces that follow it. We are being taught to be less aggressive and, and, and lesser, maybe 20 seconds, never six minutes like some of us were taught. Um, so, And I'm not trying to create controversy. I'm trying to create change by sharing clinical studies and research that says if you balance out muscles and tendons, the majority of tendon pain goes away. And when you do that, you can be gentler and more effective in treating what's called tendinosis or minor collagen disorganization of the tendons. And so we're seeing patients with tendon pain of the elbow or hip or knee um, have those resolved in one session and never come back as long as they do their, their, their stretches to short muscles and their strengthening to weak, long muscles. Um, but the clinical research and the clinical reasoning skills and the uh, clinical studies that I will share this time will certainly um, prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that it's just not my opinion and my experience from results, but but that science is proving perhaps we should take a different look at the way we approach tendon pain. I'd, absolutely, absolutely. And so some of that came from from working on the book, no doubt, and, and staying up to date with the research. And so it sounds like that's really changed uh, some of the things that you're doing or, or augmented yeah. some of what you've been training on. I call it learning transitions. I'm embarrassed from some of the things I would have taught 15 and 20 years ago. So I say to my students, I've never made a mistake. I always taught what I thought was the best thing to do, but I've made hundreds of learning transitions, things that I would <laughs> never think about doing that I used to do to my clients years ago. Well, you know, we I always tell my students uh, the same thing. I learn by teaching. And as I as I teach, I, I share the information that is what I have at the time, but if I find mm -hmm. out later that I was mistaken or that something has Oh, improved. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Since I put it into my uh, coursework, then I'll definitely pass that on as soon as I know. So I'm glad that you're doing the same thing. Great. Thank you. So uh, here's a question for you, James. I know that you've mentioned Whitney Lowe a couple of times, and, and Whitney is also presenting uh, a class on orthopedic massage. Can you tell me, uh, you know, what the difference is between your presentations or, uh, or and how they complement each other? I think it's a great question, Felicia, because we're both calling what we do orthopedic massage. But Whitney goes so much in greater depth in pathology, um, what's really happening uh, in the human body when they're diagnosed with each clinical condition. Whitney goes in much greater detail as a physical therapist would in clinical reasoning skills. Even though we teach a lot of assessment, his, his training is going, his strength is uh, assessment, special testing, and clinical reasoning skills to best define treatment plan. And I teach that, but not to the level where Whitney teaches that part of, of orthopedic assessment and special testing and clinical reasoning. But I come on board, and I've the gift I've had is to train with many different disciplinary uh, pioneers of like fascial work, neuromuscular, posturology, et cetera. And I have the gift of blending multiple disciplines into a treatment plan to better uh, follow up on the clinical reasoning and assessment and special testing. And then the other strength that, that I have in the field of training and the hands-on part of it is that we teach the client to stretch short muscles, strengthen weak muscles to keep the body in balance. So the marriage of, of the incredible in-depth clinical reasoning, pathology, assessment, special orthopedic testing, to the hands-on treatment to to uh, address those clinical conditions and what the patient does between sessions after the treatment is profound. In fact, Whitney has um, approached me to do what's called a mastery level of, of orthopedic massage certification where they would certify with both of us 
and our combined certification would make them a master in orthopedic massage. And, I, and I'm really excited about that possibility of manifesting. And this American Massage Conference is going to be one of the greatest launching boards for Whitney and I to to let the world know that we we realize that we both have uniquely uh, powerful strengths in what we teach, and the marriage of what we both do can take every practitioner to another level. Well, that does sound really exciting. And do you have any um, any sort of a plan or date as to when you might launch that, or is that something we have to find out at the American I, Massage Conference? I, think, I honestly think it's going to be – we're putting it all together, and we've been communicating um, – you know, biweekly, but I think the real launching board is going to be at the American Massage Conference. Well, that is really exciting, and for anybody that's interested in this type of work, uh, certainly that would be a, a great uh, additional training to do to to have, like you said, the the assessment skills and and to learn more about the pathology from Whitney. And then I personally really like the blending of the different different techniques uh, and putting it into action with what you're talking about. So that that sounds phenomenal. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Well, James, what have we missed in in terms of a sort of a primer for um, for your classes and appearance at the American Massage Conference? Is there anything that you'd like to mention that we haven't discussed, or any advice that you would give to therapists who are interested in learning about orthopedic massage? I would say just be prepared to be in a, a very uh, diversified group. The my um, students range from people still in massage training to doctors of chiropractic and physical therapy and athletic training. Um, I do teach uh, uh, osteopaths and chiropractors in the United States and in Europe. And what I do is is the chiropractors realize how much we need to work together. You can't manipulate bones without balancing out muscles. And so whether you're a brand new therapist or you're working in a spa or you want to work with a professional sports team, um, I spent 15 years working with collegiate and Olympic and professional athletes. And so this is really, one thing we didn't say is this is really high-end sports massage. It goes way beyond pre- and post-event massage. It's about performance enhancement. It's about injury rehab. It's working with the athletic trainer, the strength training coach, the you know the physical therapy, the co- doctor of chiropractic. And um, I'm going to really emphasize on the importance of humility so that we can continue to bridge that gap between all professional manual therapists so that we don't start talking bad about physical therapy or the chiropractor or whatever. That, but instead, we teach them what we know best, or the muscle experts, and they can, and it can complement what they do if we present it in a humble way to those other uh, professions. So, just be prepared for an exciting integrated uh, body work um, seminar. I'm, I'm really excited about the conference. Well, I think your classes sound great, and I'm really upset that I'm teaching at the same time you are. <laughs> Maybe we'll teach in the same room as you mentioned earlier. I know. We'll have to we'll have to figure that out for another conference because I'm really interested in learning about that. But perhaps I'll maybe I'll end up signing up for your uh, your eight hour class. Just a reminder to everybody: James is teaching two classes. In case you didn't catch that before, the first one is a three hour class, and that's on Friday. That's the elbow, wrist, forearm, and hand. Uh, treatments, if I'm correct, James? Yes. yes. And then the other is an eight-hour class, and that's going to focus on the pelvic stability, complicated knee conditions, and also complicated shoulder conditions. Yes. Great. And so that's going to be a more in-depth eight-hour class, um, and you can register for either of those, obviously, at uh, AmericanMassageConference.com. James, in the meantime, I'm going to wrap up here shortly and, and give people a few reminders about the conference, but if people would like to learn more about you or the other classes that you're offering, how can they how can they find out about that? Thanks for asking, Felicia. Um, our website is www.orthomassage, that's O-R-T-H-O, massage.net. Our toll-free number is one 800 643 Five five four three. We just came up with a brand new brochure came out last week uh, that shows how we're bridging the gap in all manual therapy, manual therapy worlds. Um, so if they go to our website, orthomassage.net, or they call 1-800-643-5543, we can send them the new brochure and direct them to all of our classes because I do teach about 46 weekends around the world uh, every year. Wow, I don't know how you do it, but um, I think your classes are well worth it, and you're definitely going to see me in one of them sometime, somewhere, Great. somehow, <laughs> as I definitely want to learn how I can do a better job with my own massage clients, and especially on those frozen shoulders. That's, that seems to be one of my common issues, so I can't wait to do that. 
Um, just as a reminder to everybody else on the call, we'd like to invite you to be a part of the American Massage Conference, the first ever, and it's being held in Atlanta, May 20th through 22nd, 2011. Only $40 gets you access to 25 free one-hour classes. In addition to that, it gets you uh, admission to the trade show and opportunity to meet and visit with top manufacturers of various massage products uh, and equipment, and you just can't, can't miss that. It's going to be an amazing trade show. Not to mention, with that ticket, you get the opportunity to win thousands of dollars in door prizes and have admission to the Saturday Night Gala with food, drinks, and live entertainment. Beyond the free one-hour classes, over 100 hours of continuing education are being offered with James as well as other top presenters in the massage uh, profession. And if you're a student, uh, there is a free student day and Smart from the Start presentation, as well as a free full-day class on passing the MBLEX and the NCB TMB exam. That's with Laura Allen, and it includes a free copy of her book, generously donated by her publisher, Lippincott. Also, we'll be having the first ever National Massage Therapy Job Fair. That's on Sunday the 22nd. And this is not just for people who live in Atlanta. There will be national, state, and local employers on hand, ready and waiting to meet you. So everybody that comes to the conference has the opportunity to potentially walk away with a new job. Hotel rates for the conference are very affordable. You can get rates as low as $121 a night in the conference hotel. And they have single rooms or single rates as well as quad rooms. So you can split a room with a group of people and cut that rate even further down from that $121. Of course, I want to remind everybody that there's going to be a show guide making up the center spread of Massage Today's May issue. That's going out to over 62,000 massage therapists and it will also be available free at the show. This will be the first nationally circulated conference show guide and has some really good uh, advertising opportunities. So if you are a vendor or an educator who's listening in today and you want to get some great exposure for your products or classes, please contact Sandy Pierce at Massage Today for details on how to be a part of the show guide. I hope that after today's discussion with James Wislowski, everyone listening has found a new interest in orthopedic massage and in signing up for his class. If you'd like to find out how you can attend the American Massage Conference May 20th through 22nd in Atlanta, Georgia, and meet James, of course, and attend his classes, as well as the classes of the other amazing presenters at this year's event, please visit the official conference website at www.americanmassageconference.com. We also invite you to stay connected with us on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash American Massage Conference. James, thanks again for taking the time to be with us today and for sharing your time and knowledge. I learned a lot, as always, with our great presenters. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you in Atlanta, and I'm sure everyone's looking forward to your class at the American Massage Conference. Thanks, Felicia. It's an honor to, to be part of the group. It's such a great group of people, so I'm looking forward to it. Well, I agree completely. This is Felicia Brown, and on behalf of everyone from the American Massage Conference and Massage Therapy Radio, I want to thank you for tuning in to this broadcast of the American Massage Conference pre-conference broadcast series. Please remember to check back for upcoming interviews each week between now and May 20th. We look forward to seeing you in Atlanta in May. Thanks so much, and have a fabulous day. Come again. Come again. Let there be plenty, plenty. Let there be, let there be plenty love. Let there be 